three to three seventy five. Uh, when we talk of our story of success. Uh, many people measure success perhaps by uh, uh, the number of uh, you know or the number of crores uh, turnover uh, at l measure we do things a little differently um, we we try to measure our growth uh, based on the impact on lives that we make and uh, so that has been a, something that has been there from the very beginning um, babu and i are not traditionally from business backgrounds uh, we uh, have had no um, business education i mean business education a little bit uh, but no nothing handed to us and so we've had to start everything from scratch uh, and that has been uh, something that for us has been a learning uh, lesson every every day is a learning lesson every year is a learning lesson and we are like in the hard, school of hard knocks many a times trying to uh, put things together and learn from uh, all of you all and uh, so when we say 3 to 375 we're talking about the number of people and today i want what i would like to do is i would probably take you through uh, what we believe is the reason why el measure is successful very quickly and uh, babu will get into some details trying to give us uh, some examples on how we actually got that done and uh, so to start off i have three p's that i'll focus on today we'll talk about is purpose and then we'll talk about people and then we'll talk about a plan and I'll quickly try to walk through those slides for you um when babu and i started the organization uh as 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 even a young man i remember you know thinking uh what is the you know my my dad was in non profit even before uh we started all of this and so from a very young age all i have seen my dad doing is helping others uh through running these organizations that he's been running and so uh, as a child uh, you know i saw him going from pillar to post trying to figure out how to raise money for these organizations that he was running and uh, so babu and i we had the privilege of growing up together uh, babu had come after finishing his education uh, to bangalore and he was uh, you know uh, working in bangalore and he was staying at my house and we would talk from time to time on what we could do together in the future and so this conversation started at home and then many years later i moved off to the us to study and uh, then later on started working and babu joined uh, conserve uh, and started working there and uh, in 2004 babu uh, and i we were talking and that's that's when the conversation started on how we could you know do something for the organization that was already working uh, in terms of um uh, you know trying to develop uh, the 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 social work that we were already doing and if you look at these children in this picture uh, these are young the kids that that my dad had taken at that point of time uh, all of them are uh, pure orphans and uh, today on the right hand side is a picture of them grown up uh, several of them going to college and uh, several of them computer engineers uh, one has finished a counseling degree uh, some uh, almost half of them are in college and below half is is above 10th grade uh so 10th 11th 12th so in a few years they will go to college and uh so when you see this um uh, and in 2001 uh 911 took place and a lot of the funding that we were getting for the organization soon started drying up and that's why in 2004 um uh, we we came together and started l measure so l measure uh, kind of has a different story usually people make a lot of money and then do philanthropy or or giving Uh, for us it was the opposite way already there was a lot of things happening we wanted to figure out a way in which we could help sustain an organization that was already in play and so the purpose was very very important for us as we um, you know started doing this simon sinek uh, i don't know if many of us would probably know simon sinek the the question why uh, everybody has this question why why should we do what we do why should i come to work uh, is it just the money that i'm getting paid uh these are some of the questions that you know most human beings are driven by purpose there's got to be something more than the salary that we give and all of the different things so when we put l measure together we put l measure together in such a way that there was this higher purpose that we were all chasing after it was not just a pure motive of trying to make money and money should only be a by product of what we do and uh you know this is something that is very unique i think for us uh this drives us uh and so uh 
that's how we started uh, L measure. So, okay. So this is a, a picture in 2008 uh, that we've taken of the organization. Uh, and many of these people uh, are still working with us. Uh, I couldn't find a picture that was a little earlier than that. Um, we were trying to put one together, but this is a picture from 2007. I would say 60 to 70% of the people that you see in this picture are still here with us. Uh, and I think many of the things that have been done uh, is because of the purpose with which we drive the organization. So when they get a paycheck, uh, the paycheck is only a byproduct. They know that all of their work contributes to something bigger than just themselves. And uh, all of these men, including Vinod, is sitting right there next to Babu. Uh, I, I, you know, some, many of these people can be recognized. Uh, and so this is our humble beginning. And many of the Cosma members were part of the reason as to why L measure is L measure. Uh, you have supported us when nobody knew us. Uh, I, I remember some of those first, first orders that came in that Vinod brought in. Vinod was uh, you know, leading the team at that point in sales and some of the first first orders that have come through. And many of you all, an unknown brand uh, was supported. Uh, and so we thank each one of you for being uh, with us in that journey. Uh, and we talk about uh, purpose and part of it is culture. And culture comes from our values. And so I want to just quickly work uh, and show you what kind of culture we build at, uh, at L Measure. So we say we're an employee focused organization that's looking at solving customer problems by focusing on vision, mission, and values and realizing that possibilities truly are infinite. Uh, we take and do an exercise with every single employee where we go over our values. Our live our values is something that we go over with them every, every single employee, not only when they're onboarded, we make them actually draw the logo. And then we try to explain to them what the logo stands for. Uh, it, you know, when we talk about these dots that you see in the logo, we say these are, the, these are infinite dots uh, of possibilities that you can bring and make the E that you see there. Um, and when we say, you know, whether it's wired, wireless, whatever you can think of, where it's custom developing a product, uh, your innovation and everything that you say comes together in the form of that E. The uh, other thing is the circle that's around the E. We talk about the protection that we provide both for our customers, our vendors, our employee and society as a whole. So we kind of try and explain that. The, the last E th that's there is, and then the colors that you see there is also privilege for all. No discrimination based on gender, color, caste. And so we try to explain this to everybody and we try to make sure that they understand our values and our culture very well. Uh, many a times it's the culture that keeps us together. When we were a small team, it was very, very easy to percolate the culture. When, when there was 20, 30, 40 people, it was very easy. But when you can become 350, it's very difficult. And so some of the things that we do is we do our live our values constantly with the team. And uh, we do certain things where uh, when we do our appraisal, we give them a certain portion of the thing for people who do live our values uh, in their uh, uh, work life. So for example, if you don't, uh, one of our values that people say is no drugs or alcohol or you know, those kinds of things, you should not be there in your uh, personal life. And if you're able to live like that, then we kind of give them a small uh, differentiation. And then another thing that we do is build people is something that's in our value. So then we say, okay, if you build somebody or you mentor somebody, then we, you know, we give a special uh, extra uh, KRA. In our KRA itself, we put that in there. So these are some of the things that we do from our side uh, to kind of move the uh, culture along, the culture or the purpose along. And then we redid our vision mission in 2016 when we um, moved into our new facility. There, what we said was our vision is simply to make a greener world that manages energy really well. We want to innovate, collaborate, and help our people uh, build extraordinary products and solutions in the fields of energy and, manage, energy and building management. And making and conserving the energy was something that we were very, very passionate about. And so that vision, mission uh, is very, very simple. Our mission is to build extraordinary people uh, that then build an extraordinary company, uh, not the other way around. And so our focus is on, on people. The, the last thing I want to kind of show you is our values. Uh, many people have their values written on the wall. 
Enron's value on the wall was uh, honesty. But then finally, when Enron failed, uh, Enron failed miserably because the value was not practiced. And so enriching lives, enthusiasm to innovate, excellence everywhere and ethical without regret. These are four values that we have. And Babu will be going through some of these and showing you real life experiences of how we uh, put that together. So we have a very strong purpose with which drives us. Uh, and I think that's very important for any organization. The next thing that drives us is our people. So when we talk about uh, why L measure is different, we say our engine is our people. And that is something that we supremely practice in the organization. Uh, you know, we have about 375 people in the organization today. Uh, many a times when we hire our people, we don't hire somebody that does not fit our culture. They may be extremely smart. They may be extremely good at what they do, uh, but if they don't fit with our culture uh, or our purpose, then we tend to not hire that per person into the organization because uh, usually that will come and destroy the organization much faster than uh, the benefit that the person might bring from the MBAs or the, 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 the knowledge that he has. Uh, and so we focus on culture and the cultural fit is very, very important. And the vision that we have is very, very important. And so our people who come along can come in and see this particular uh, aspect of us. So when we talk about work culture, uh, I, I handle sales and marketing. And so sales and marketing, uh, we have about 90 people, I think. Um, many of them are across the board, across, you know, in different, different places. Uh, during the lockdown, one of the things we did was we did our live our values again. Uh, and then we did a lot of training. We did a lot of equipping our, our men during this particular time. And one of the neat things about uh, the way we manage uh, our salespeople as well are, we don't necessarily push them too hard. Uh, most sales organizations are pushing people so hard and saying, okay, did you meet your numbers? Did you meet your numbers? Did you meet your numbers? Instead, what we do is if they don't meet their numbers, we try to find out why they don't meet their numbers and then try to help them through that process. And many people who leave our organization, uh, I'll just take the example of the Hyderabad team. Uh, the Hyderabad team, we had uh, about five or six people uh, in that team. Out of five or six people, maybe four of them left the organization uh, to go to a uh, different organization. Invariably within one year, they've come back to us and said that we want to come back and uh, be in your sales team. And you know, these are the kinds of proofs that are there that people are very important in the organization. What they taste here, they perhaps may not taste outside, not even in a multinational company, in the way that we are family, uh, that, that we are family focused. And so this is some things that we do that are very, very particular about uh, El Measure. We focus on them and their families. Uh, and so Babu will give us some more examples on how we do this uh, in, in a day. One of the things that I want to leave with you all when we talk about people is, it's very expensive to lose employees. So you want to retain them. Uh, and the best way to retain them is to have a good purpose that they are aligned with and to take care of them really, really, really well. And then a trained employee is very, very, is going to be far more efficient than an untrained employee. So invest in training. So we do this uh, uh, and we, we set for ourselves about two mandates per person in the organization. It could be technical training, it could be uh, soft skills, it could be, um, you know, something. We've even gone to the place where we've done, uh, you know, family seminars uh, for, for, for the employees. Uh, a trained employee brings higher productivity as well. So investing in our people is the best way. And trained employees will retain and grow your customers. Uh, when you talk about branding, the brand ambassadors technically come from within the organization. So as El Measure, when we look at our 375 people, we look at 375 brand ambassadors, that they are the ones that can actually carry the brand forward. So all of the marketing, digital, all of the other things that you do are just um, to, 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 to help the entire branding process, but the actual branding process happens with our employees because they are the ones that front face the customer, they're the ones that meet the customer when the customer has a problem, how they solve the problem is also just as important. So that's what the brand ambassador does. And so to have 375 brand ambassadors would be the best uh, situation. And that's what we push at. And training doesn't have to be expensive. Many people think that we have to call somebody from the outside to do training. 
I would say 90% of our training is done from within the organization. Uh, we have somebody take up a topic and we say, okay, can you, can you please deliver something on this particular topic? And then they spend some time research. So they've grown as a result of it and they come and share their knowledge with us. And so building people uh, both within the organization and outside the organization has been something. Um, and as I, you, we've pushed for the great place to work. Uh, the first time we did the great place to work, it was a scary affair. You know, you're going to ask an outside organization to come and take interviews with all 375 employees. At that point, it was 350 perhaps. Uh, and they're going to rate the organization and you have no control over this entire process. So the first time we stood out and said, okay, we'll have this great place to work, come and certify us. We didn't know whether we'd get it or not. And so they came in, uh, they come and talk to the employees. Uh, you have no way to manipulate the data or do anything there. And so, uh, and so uh, we, we kind of pushed that and we got the first year, that was last year, 2019, 20. Uh, we got great place to work as, a, as an organization. Uh, and then again, this year, we uh, applied for this great place to work. And again, this year, we were able to do it. And this year, we got five points more than we got last year. Uh, and uh, the next year we do it, we want to be in the top 50 great places to work in the country. We have to get go above maybe another four or five more points to be in the top 50. And so the, it, 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 we are constantly challenged to make our people the very best and invest in our people. And so as our mission says, build extraordinary people, we focus on that particular thing. And then they build the extraordinary company and the byproducts thereof. And so, uh, you know, oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying, yeah. Okay, this one, right? Yeah. Uh, from there, we got, we've got a great purpose, then the people, and the last point I'm going to leave with y'all is the process. Uh, you know, we have, uh, we have to have a great process. After you have all of these things, if you don't have the process in place or the plan in place, then I think we're go generally going to fail. Uh, we can't stop with just those two things. And so uh, many of the times when we started off as an organization, we would be able to do things because of our inherent knowledge. But as we grew, we found out that that was not possible. So what we did was uh, we started putting different kinds of strategies in place. So we have a corporate strategy that drills down to uh, department wise uh, goals. The department wise goals go down to individual KRAs. And this is something that is driven quite well within the organization to deliver. The other thing that we've done is we've taken some, some of these long time leaders like we know then all of them that you see and created a group called uh, a KRA one, you know, we go put a number at the end of it, which is usually the, the year goal. And this time it's KRA 130 team. Uh, and they are actually 15 to 16 people that lead the organization or lead different departments across the organization. We call them owners uh, because they have an ownership stake. The fact is that we, we do profit sharing with them and uh, we set goals together and then we drive these processes together. And so um, that has been one thing that we've been doing for the last two, three years. The other thing was to invest in tools. So we've invested in SAP uh, to run our ERP and all of our processes. We had an inbuilt system all these years that where we had done it ourselves. Uh, but then we realized that we did not want to invest time and effort trying to do uh, this. Instead, uh, let's go with somebody who knows what they're doing. And so we invested in SAP. For our customer relationship side, we started using Zoho. Uh, or Salesforce, it's something like that, uh, similar. Zoho has been an excellent tool for us that brings a lot of visibility on how our sales and customer support is performing. Uh, for uh, the, the customer support, we invested in Zoho Desk. And these are all SaaS-based softwares that give us data. So today we are able to make all of our decisions based on data rather than just an assumption. Uh, as the business grows, it's better to look at data and look at uh, this and then make the decision accordingly. Uh, so this is something that we've grown. In the sales, what we've done is we have weekly meetings with our general managers. We also have weekly meetings and reviews with our regional managers. Now we have a weekly, I mean, monthly meetings twice a month 
with all of our sales team, along with Babu and myself, we meet with them. And uh, we also do something called a roll call where, uh, you know, the boys are putting their numbers in for the month. But we've brought in so many different processes and plans and goals that help us achieve these numbers together. Without these systems in place or the plan in place, it's very, very difficult to grow. Uh, and so uh, for us, like I said, purpose, people, and plan. And we continuously revolve around these three Ps. And Babu will uh, show us some of these things. These are some of the things that we do in a manufacturing system. You can see uh, there is a certain flow. The same thing is there for sales, for production, uh, for finance, uh, and all the different uh, things. So uh, this picture was taken, a screenshot was taken this morning. I just added it this morning into the PPT. Uh, you see our great Mr. Vinod standing there in the center. Uh, I, I just saw it on Facebook and I just wanted to show you uh, how the purpose is flow uh, is is driven in, in into Vinod's mind and you know others likewise. So Vinod during Christmas time he just posted it this morning the local Anglo distributed blankets early morning for needs in Kolar on twenty fifth. This is something that flows with our people. It's not something that Sam Cherry or Babu TK asked Vinod to do, but Vinod's been very passionately being involved in Rotary in Bangalore. Uh, he was uh, you know uh, giving blankets even. Uh, at, at, the, at a Catholic um, uh, old age home uh, yesterday. Uh, and this morning when I got up, these are the Facebook posts I'm seeing. And I just took the Facebook post and I'm, I'm showing it to you all because this purpose is very, very important for us both within the organization, and outside the organization. This really drives who we are. And I'll stop with a few more slides. This is the El Measure team as of today. Uh, we have about 375 people. I showed you a picture in the past and I'm showing you a picture today. Uh, for us, success is measured like this. It's measured definitely like this. And it's always uh, the best way to measure success. Uh, I think eventually you'll find all the byproducts of profit and all of the other things, products, all of these things will become byproducts. And, uh, you know, I think it'll be great. Increased innovation and knowledge sharing is something that we do. Uh, everyone has an opportunity to get special recognition in the organization. Uh, people here are willing to give a little extra to get the job done uh, when you start investing in people. Uh, we do 360 degree performance management. So different, different people can, you know, kind of talk uh, your, your, your subordinates, your peers, your, uh, your bosses. Uh, so that this is the way performance management is done. And another thing is we have an open door policy. Babu's and my door for our cabin is open all the time. So anybody can walk in at any given time. We can talk about your personal needs. We can talk about your family. We can talk about anything. Uh, and the open door policy is something that we've, uh, we pride ourselves in. Uh, so the management is very approachable as well. And so this is something uh, uh, that we are, uh, the great place to work was in many ways, a, a testament to what we believed we were doing. Uh, this was some kind of a seal of approval from, from an outside organization to saying, okay, you guys are going in the right direction. Uh, and so, uh, we look at success this way. Um, of course, then this comes, the, the slide before delivers this. Um, and, you know, we look at about 120, 230 crores to being done this year. Uh, we are on track in spite of a pandemic. Uh, El Measures, with your support, with all of your support, uh, uh, will grow maybe about 10 to 15% even this year. Uh, almost like the Cosmo Brotherhood. Uh, you know, as you all have grown, we, we are also going to grow uh, this year. Uh, so thank you so much for your support. Uh, we are in about 50 plus countries. Uh, the people there that you saw brings this uh, benefit in 15,000 plus clients, over 5 million products across the world. Uh, and this is the benefit uh, that we have. And my last slide, and I'm stopping, uh, have a clear and meaningful purpose uh, and, or vision have the right people that align with your vision, define your process, measure the results, and then weave your core values into everything you do and practice. Uh, so I, th this is the quick, quick snapshot of how uh, L measure has grown uh, over the last 16 years. Uh, so so my, my, dad, my dad started, uh, you know, my dad got into nonprofit work in the year 19, uh, 73. 
and has always been doing this all his life. So as, as a child growing up, this is all I have seen. And uh, you know, he, he started off with nothing. Uh, and uh, we've now got uh, several schools that we run for underprivileged children. Growing up, my dad told me one thing, son, I cannot give you anything but education. Uh, and that, that, that is the only thing he was able to give me. And that was the most powerful thing. Uh, and so we, we believe that giving education for others as well, especially for the underprivileged, uh, will help them change their lives. And so there are about uh, five schools that we run uh, and, and basically for underprivileged children, uh, the fees that we collect is very, very nominal uh, and the funds are raised from organizations like us. The boys that you saw, that is one group that's there in Coimbatore, the boys and girls, there are about 25 of them. Uh, they're all going to, I said, like college. Uh, we have one in Hyderabad uh, that we're running at this point. We tried to run one in Rajasthan, but had difficulty running one in Ra Rajasthan. So we had to shut down the one in Rajasthan uh, due to uh, difficulties in getting permission and moving things forward. We also do uh, a lot of self-help groups that we start where people can buy uh, perhaps a cow or a buffalo or sheep or goat. Uh, we've even helped people with autos, buying autos, uh, where they can help uh, and have a self-sustained life thereafter. Uh, so these are some of the uh, things that we're actively involved in. We also have a dental clinic that we put together for free dental care, because most of the people in rural areas don't take care of their teeth and their eyes. These are two things that we've noticed that uh, most of them don't have good access to, of course, gynecology and pediatrics would also be something that we would love to get into because childbirth and um, ch childcare is two also difficult things for, for rural uh, healthcare. And then an old age home perhaps in, in down the line is what we're looking at. And so these are some of the things that we're involved in. I go one day a week uh, uh, to Coimbatore. When I came back in 2007, I spent about four to five years, even though I came to help Babu, I spent four to five years uh, working in the nonprofit, trying to set up processes for them. And then after I finished that, I actually only came to El Measure. And that's why my faith, you know, um, knowing y'all, uh, I don't know many of y'all as well as Babu does. I came only in 2012, uh, full time into El Measure, where I'm, I'm putting more of my time and effort uh, doing this. But this is what we do over there. And this is what drives us at the end of the day. Babu came and even when he was working in conserve, Babu would help us because we didn't have a lot of help at that point. Uh, Babu was also helping us. And so Babu and I have only seen this much of our lives. And so we want to continue this into the future as much as possible. And this is the legacy I think that we all can leave. We can't take the crows with us. Uh, we'll have to leave everything back when, when, when God calls us. Uh, we cannot say we, we don't want to come or we cannot take anything with us. And so I think finally, the only legacy we leave is the, the impact that we make on people. Uh, I'm always uh, uh, be a part of building people. And today I'm going to talk only on the building of people. And that's the main essence of El Mesha. Uh, we always say that uh, maybe the religious book have said, if the vision is not there, people perish. And for any organization, that first thing you need to have is the vision. And the vision for us, us is like-minded people have joined together and got this. None of us were from the business background. None of them have, even our parents or uncles or anybody else, uh, in the business background. And we were able to do that because we had a vision. We had a like-minded people. And I've seen people, uh, when I was working even with uh, uh, Conserve and at that point of time, I used to go to this organization, uh, my parent organization, uh, and we used to help them. I've seen them working so hard, uh, passionately and so on. And I've also seen a lot, a lot of people, uh, friends of mine who have selflessly helping uh, poor people, helping the uh, children for their education, uh, spending the money for this hospital uh, need and so on. I've seen people are selfless people. So by saying that we discuss all these things, look, I have a firm of this nature. My uncle is struggling, nine bar 11 have hit him quite bad. And uh, I'm part of that and uh, helping that organization. Why don't we do that? And that's how the whole uh, scenario came together, uh, form a team, a corporate team, and then why don't we uh, help this uh, organization to grow better? So these like-minded people is the only thing which has uh, fetched all of us to move for forward, not from the business background or educational background. 
and uh, we had a set of uh, uh, vision what we said was if you are here to help the society why not help your customer and that's been there from the blood of everybody and uh, we started any product or solution that is given in the market they, they should feel delighted now sam has showed a couple of slides with uh, five is pokay okay uh, delight and customer delight and so many things these words were not known to us or uh, none of us because none of us had a business background sales background nothing only the design is the only thing which we had but these kind of uh, things we said we will delight the customer if you are here to serve the society why not the customer and then the initial stage we brought in what is the pain point of all the customers let's address the pain point let's not be a meter manufacturing company like anybody else do it we need to be uh, different from others we should understand the pain point of the people and we should do it. at that point of time we understood uh, india was lacking in terms of automation automation is uh, we were far far away from uh, the rest of the countries where in the any industry if you go for it they would find a good amount of automation uh, man intervention is least in that and that's what we found it so we decided we should do bring uh, something which is a, uh, overcoming the pain points of uh, customers that's way in those days 15 years back or 16 years back when we brought the simple voltmeter meter kind of thing we brought in programmability into the things and uh, even when we brought the multifunction meters we said let's bring the ios into it the ios can actually help the industries to do some kind of uh, automation quite well i remember i don't have a picture to show you i remember in those days i used to use one of my meter four digit meter in a metal structure i used to put it there the man who is sitting there and uh, uh trying to do the um, uh, process moment the process is over he'll press the button there and that moves so we used to have a lot of uh, automation things even in the beginning days i'm talking about 2004 and 5 we used to have this kind of facility so we thought we should bring something which is uh, industry friendly uh, at that point out on the plc and those things were very very expensive and none of them were manufactured in india so hence it become expensive so we thought we should bring such kind of facilities to them and we implemented and we shown many people uh, this kind of uh, features can be accomplished along with the simple meters and so on we thought the four rows of at that point of time nobody had a four row of uh, displays we thought the customer had lot of pain point because today if you look at it most of them comes in the through the energy management uh, solution you can actually get that in the uh, uh, mobile and so on in those days people never used to go for the ems solution that often many of them just stand alone is more than sufficient for such people to scroll across some uh, pages it was uh double we just simply reduced to half by adding one more row to the uh, whole thing we brought in lot of other uh, pain points of customers like mechanical and electrical together then um, uh, digital elr acdc combined and l tag etc now now this is one of one of the things uh, that i will speak to you little later maybe on the next uh, occasion that um, uh, cosma teams is uh, giving a slot this is going to create a history in india the elta and we have no shy in telling all these things because uh, we guys uh, everybody need to adopt such kind of a good things what we here intent is you can actually see a lot of uh, meters over here a six of them i only shown you six of them a lot of mcbs there is a hanging city which is coming when i say this will be a subject of your interest so i just want to say you see every meter have a 12 connections and two connection for the communication two or three con connection for the communication so 15 kind of wires which is traveling all these meters 6 meters now you see the uh, cities which is kept over here you have a, uh, a tray which is uh, running the cable uh, left and right and every way it's a beautiful one i've taken from uh, elins uh, recently when i visited him and i tell you one of the good connectivity i could see it there i'm sure you guys also will have the similar kind of uh, neat and clean uh, connectivity i was quite impressed about the whole thing and you see a lot of trays which is uh, uh, wires are taken through and brought to the mcbs and you can also see about 12 uh, mcbs and so on so on what we are trying to do is why don't we reduce this overall cost by 30 percentage why don't we reduce the space by 50 percentage why don't we make the installation the whole installation at least by 1 by 10 i'm talking about the meter installation okay not the mcb installation you know my and that you're hearing it 
that's why we brought in this particular product i know you would be able to see this it's a very small one you can you can see uh, such small i will not talk about much here but we will uh, take a call because this is going to re create a revolutionary uh, in india so let me move on we also make sure that you know our products are uh, upgraded every uh, once in 3 or 4 years the reason being someone said it if you have to have a break and then somebody repair it it's not the right thing before it gets break you start making it how you cannot extend the life so every 3 to 4 years we do it because the technology is uh, far far growing and uh, we get a benefit of price you get a benefit of uh, features and so on so we do that once in 3 to 4 years we do this the fourth generation also have come in which is very good uh, i would say taking care of all the pain points of the customers when we start visiting them we listen to them and try to implement them people we mean uh, everything in that whether it is el mesher uh, supplier or customers the building people is uh, my job in fact i have do less job on technical side these days and uh, my team does the research things i only build people now when i talk about building people we enrich people uh, we had a four values sam had mentioned to you we used to have enthusiasm to innovate is the first value as of today but earlier days when we did uh, enriching people used to be the first one but people uh, we did have a brainstorming session and we everybody had their own opinion and they brought in enthusiasm to innovate as the first one but i still uh, uh, me and sam follows with enriching people um uh, we do conduct a lot of seminars which uh, sam have mentioned we would have a personality development a skill development a time management attitude and so on so on that's a normal corporate people does it but what we do separately uh, is we do something like a parenting uh, how to uh, parent a child we do something on the marriage course we do something on the how uh, the blessings of uh, looking after your parents and these are the subjects we talk about it i'll tell you why the this makes a huge difference into people is people are very resistant to change anything what you talk about change hey, look time management is too good um, uh, did we finish on time did we finish on time people may not have uh, so much acceptability in the beginning but you talk about something of this nature uh, we talk about uh, marriage course hey, the importance of you serving your uh, wife or importance of serving your husband making giving a coffee on a uh, daily basis to her or probably taking uh, off a day and uh, spend a uh, couple of hours in a restaurant alone both of you alone and we call it as dating or whatever so these are the kind of things which you say and when we follow it up with them at some point of time did you take your uh, spouse for a treat and did you have the did you get the um, uh, do it on a periodic manner they don't feel as much bad as when you say a hey, look did you complete on time of this project etc so what we develop them is change is something which you need to adopt it these are something which is easily can be adoptable we talk about uh, children you know talk about children no parent in the world is more uh, concentrating than that so people come people get gather the information how to uh, do the parent in the children and we say did you practice some other things that not scolding them uh, not to use the bad word uh, not lying in front of them etc etc when we say that when we talk follow it up with certain things i tell you any seminar any uh, meetings that we take conducted we always have a takeaways from it so here also we have a takeaways and we follow it up then so when you follow it up with them they actually understand try to incorporate try to do those the kind of things and once somebody gets into their heart a hey, change is adaptable now the change they uh, took care of that then when you bring in the changes in the corporate world also they start adopting it faster so that's where you find uh, them we have every once in 3 months we have a, a one day get together all the employees together uh, it will be fun time it be sports or something else we would be doing it and probably one hours of uh, development uh, personality development or something like that but we do that on a periodic basis sometime it is uh, two times in a quarter but one time in a quarter is a must actually then we also take uh, these boys to the parent organization what we do the social work and so on so on uh, seeing is believing it so that's what we do it uh, to them it encourages them also to be uh, more givers and uh, someone have said it giving is more blessing than anything else and we teach the values of such thing to the uh, thing it is not for alone to the employees even to the customers when it comes 
if we have introduced a product into the market make sure it is well delivered to the tune of his delight there was a situation that you know eight or 10 years back uh, we have introduced a product called wifi uh, prepaid meter which is in iit kanpur and that was the first time we introduced it because uh, they want to have a technology uh, product and that's the first uh, field that we introduced it we had a little bit of a uh, uh, trouble there in uh, getting all those things on the online at that point of time talking about eight or uh, eight years plus now we sent our design team the customer support team stayed there for several weeks understood the uh, whole thing came back retrofitted the whole thing and made sure that the whole thing is uh, working satisfactorily to their delight so uh, anything that we bring into the market we make sure that we serve customers better uh, we understand the uh, getting to know the real problems and do the solution i'll also tell you one of the stories that uh, one of my uh, big customers have come to us uh, for branding this was about uh, 10 years close to 10 years now they have they have come audited everything things were very, going really fine and uh, they found uh, it's worth uh, time with us and in fact they passed on a lot of uh, knowledge all these big giants you know who have one advantage they have the system in place they bring in a lot of quality to us so they came in audited suggested certain things we implemented looking at the kind of uh, immediate responses to them and implementation of certain things they were happy to have uh, as being the oem for them and we started getting the thing lot of uh, uh, firmware development uh, hardware development stickers artwork and so many things we developed for them and the first order we executed to them and we were very happy and we even have uh, i'm talking about 10 years before so even we had that was about 15 lakhs order the first order and every month we need to do it uh, re, uh, regularly and in those days 15 lakhs was quite uh, good for us and we had a big party and i tell you uh, it's always good to have uh, enjoying it the happy moments so we share with the employees over there and we had a great party oh, we, we achieved certain things everybody is happy and so on so on couple of weeks over uh, we are preparing for the next batch uh, it's half way through a uh, lot more things have ordered and uh, it's already i get a uh, call from the man who introduced this a uh, uh, go slow on it stop uh, ordering further i'm asking him what happened to it what happened to it uh, he is not able to tell me he's emotion becoming more emotional babu just wait for it listen to me at this point of time don't go uh, much fast with that particular things i came and shared with the particular things and finally he has to say somebody have uh, interrupted uh, his boss or whatever and uh, not a good company etc they have shared and you know uh, they have to cancel that it's fine they even returned the material back to us my people have got so much uh, while and said you know look we did so much thing for them in the real way why did it happen i said look friends in in, in the business you will have all these kind of things we will have to wait and see what the god is providing for us at some point of time if your mind is cleared you are calm mind you have a uh, good attitude and good intention and the rest is something which is a by product you don't need to worry about it years passed five years later they came back they came back this time i said you know look I, in in fact they were so kind enough uh, to give and compensate for the um, extra material that i ordered and they said you know i cannot uh, give back give you anything for those meters that you sent to me i'll send back uh, you cannibalize the whole thing and use it for your own purpose in whichever way scrap the remaining i will provide you for the scrap it's fine fine fair enough for those such uh, giant organization to do that and they were kind enough to do that i would say good friends so five years later they came back uh, at that time i said look uh yeah it's fine we had a bad experience but we are not uh, having any kind of thing yes we can start up the whole business again why not and um, at that point of time i said look i have this time i have one conditions look you should give me in advance last time i did not ask for an advance and then you know things went uh, of this nature this time you should give me advance for first couple of transaction they said what else you want it becomes a so a friendly uh, affair and uh, they were trying to do anything and then i said okay look you give me only this much i will do rest uh, the better thing for you and we have invested in something else and made the products it looks far far better than the first instance and given it to them in fact it looks even better than elmesher prime product 
that's the kind of thing we have done it and it's extremely happily it's going good business and today we can actually uh, claim we are the largest meter manufacturer in the country with a lot of oems we do the kind of things because uh, this is the kind of building people that we have done it with our customers with our uh, uh, our own staff even to the supplies if you look into it um, there was uh, people who have helped us in the initial stage we always uh, treated them extremely well there were times most of them have grown along with us uh, quite big uh, sizes but if they have not some of them have not grown and have uh, in fact uh, we have been buying at a higher price maybe to an extent of 50% a higher price from them at least 20 to 30 percentage of my uh, requirement i buy from them just to make sure that the loyalty has been always ma- maintained in the bad time of elmesha in the initial time of elmesha they have been so supportive so these are the things which you build even to the supply chain and uh, sometime my purchase uh, head have asked me hey look babu you give me a contradicting statement uh, every year you say that i am going to increase the business by 30 percentage more talk to all the suppliers and get reduced a two percent reduction in pricing etc etc at the same time you are not letting me to do this for people whom i are giving a 50 percent higher price to somebody else i said that is non negotiable because we are here to build people and they were the one which you have not seen it in those days they have helped us to grow this organization and we should continue to do that so they understood that so today it become a practice for everybody and uh, i have learned something from uh, uh, cosma competition is a word should not be there in the dictionary and i'm so proud of cosma team members you are excellent one and i do the same thing i i, I tell you from the entire team of elmesher not me alone the entire team of elmesher competition does not come into picture in fact i use the competition today for uh, driving up a point otherwise none of them are competitive they are great great friends of us uh, uh, most of the competitors i'm still using the word competitor just to understand the point only but they are not they all have visited my pl- uh, plant they all have seen the kind of uh, productivity that i do it and they have encouraged us and uh, they have even invited us to their premises sometime i wonder this giant a uh, metering company uh, in those period of time uh, 10 years ago i even visited some northern uh, two of the giant uh, metering company wonderful people they are actually they never treated anybody else as a competitors just like the cosma people treat the panel builders as uh, brotherly hood the same way i was amazed at that point of time i had only 25 people for the entire uh, organization whereas he had 100 people even only in the design center testing people is separate so that's kind of good people they are so even uh, competitors are most welcome to this place see the facilities see the thing and they uh, give a lot of value addition okay in fact because of them only we improve ourselves the customers or the consumers get the benefit out of them and we treat them as uh, just like a brotherly uh, friend only even uh, if you look at it uh, any other time when i participate in exhibition they come as if it's my staff in fact i know uh, all the top uh, dozen people's uh, name and i visited most of the uh, organization metri manufacturing have visited and i'm so glad uh, i'm a part of this cosma team who does the exactly the same thing i'm so proud of you people uh, I, uh, sam had mentioned uh, sometime back you know uh, somebody else all my point i'm trying to say is building people is important for an organization okay anyway whether it is on uh, staff or uh, customers or uh, suppliers or anybody competitors building people is more important and that's the first thing that we do it for elmesha many years ago when uh, uh, snider approached us to uh, buy and so on uh, we took them uh, we, they understood the purpose and so on and um, they came forward we took them to the my parent company we have an, another manufacturing unit in coimbatore very next to the my parent company so i took them to manufacturing unit 2 in coimbatore and they seen that and subsequently i took them to the parent organization where we do the charity work and so on he was he's an he was an israeli man great guy great guy i would say great friend of me became a friend of us uh, at later point of time he was so amazed but then one reason that you know we didn't want to compromise it i showed them the kids over there and i said at any point of time i don't want them to be starving it so i need to have a resource and that's why it, it didn't work out but the friendship grew i tell you the friendship grew and uh, at some one point of time when i was having a uh, in elakramine uh, delhi 
a call comes to me and saying sam and bob are you free right now i want to introduce you a great man the biggest uh, guy of me i want to introduce so that went on we actually we travel in a auto i would say because we didn't get anything immediately from that um, uh, exhibition center and that's the first time i went to a, a huge massive hotel high graded hotel where they don't allow the auto fellows to come in actually i had to walk i went inside and talked this man was there introduced his uh, top brass to us and uh, we talked to him about 15 20 minutes so graciously he uh, ex- accepted uh, had a great talk i would say at the end of it he took pick up call and said stop all the complaints against him withdraw everything people are so good i would say whether nobody is committed in this world everybody is the top brass i have a broad mind uh, approach to anything and i do keep this relationship further with anybody there's no competition at all i would say then um, i will also tell you one of the instances where my own staff if i had only built a product which is a great product i would say you would you all know about them if i only build the product i would not reach anywhere close to this actually there was a situation long time ago very very long time in 2005 some uh, unruly things happened where uh, nine of my boys were taken to a um, uh, police station and so on i shouldn't say this but nothing is uh, wrong but i want to prove a point if i did not bring the people on the right ma- manner i would not reach this extent at that point of time these people were in the police station and uh, all my you know, nine staff were there and i went to the inspector and said why i what did i done the mistake and uh, finally they all uh, said is there something else pressure from somewhere else i'm doing this i know you are uh, innocent people etc 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 at that point of time i had a one boy who just got married and uh, and in fact i uh, made a friendship with him only 3 months ago 3 months ago i made a friendship with him in fact i knew him because i and him worked in alacrity for some time on a different period of time i had never seen this guy so he came and joined with me and 3 months ago he got married and i said look uh, inspector this one gentleman who got married the girl is from mangalore not from the city she is alone they can i do it the inspector was so gracious and said okay babu uh, that's done rest of the teams i will send only after the some of the complainant will go otherwise you be, you can send him out i went to this man uh, said look inspector is allowing you to go that's around 9 o'clock in the night this man says hey babu i cannot go from this place without you we didn't do any mistake we didn't do any harm to anybody and you are here i am here i will not go i said look man we can discuss the rest later your uh, wife is new to you and just 3 months of uh, your marriage don't show the compassion at this point of time i know you're a great guy go ahead from this place and i had to push him but he did not go by seeing that inspector said let everybody go and he let everybody go on and so on what if i didn't have these kind of a build, uh, people whom i have not built of this nature i am sure i would not grow to this extent at this point of time that's the kind of story that i can tell you and today my the top most priority for me is not make the uh, the target the bottom line higher the main thing is the people who was worked with me in the initial days will be rewarded at some point of time i know i'm working for that maybe in a, another 3 to 4 years time some kind of uh, form of a home or some kind of things would be delivered to them or in terms of uh, monetary benefit would be done because i just want to uh, convey only one message people and people are the most important for an organization without that it do not have grown to this extent at all uh, some of the people are also over um, growing faster than uh, elmesh was growing it there were time that i have sent some of my boys he move from this organization to another organization and uh, work on and that's the kind of thing we do it we have a less attrition rate i would say and uh, we have a policy called uh, uh, hire the right people train them perfectly and no fire at all the only fire happen in this organization i'll mention organization is two things you are not supposed to raise your voice against your boss in front of people solution is always available anybody have any problem solution will be provided because we have a uh, transparent open policy you can everybody is accessible including the chairman and the uh, ceo so you cannot uh, raise a voice against your uh, boss 
not the boss cannot raise a voice against the subordinate second one we say is uh, these are some of the values that we keep it the keep the drug away uh, tobacco etc etc and you are not supposed to consume any other things during the office hours and we prefer to have it even after office hours these two things is non negotiable otherwise rest the whole thing is negotiable when it comes to enthusiasm to innovate uh, we do conduct a periodic manual uh, brainstorming sessions in fact we conduct uh, we used to conduct a three years once in three years a road map for the next three years and so on but in the last uh, five years or six years if you look at it the technology is moving so fast we have to shorten this every year now to do, we, we do this uh, uh, brainstorming session in our organization and when we do it we make sure that there are no distraction calm mind is required for it adopting the new uh, process or a plan and we always do it in an external place uh, with no disturbance at all actually i'll tell you a good story what happened during even the pandemic um during the pandemic uh, all of you also must have gone through similar kind of things um we do normally about 8 crore business a month and the collection is some more closer to that uh, in a month in the month of april when it is came to 25th of april we have collected only 25 lakhs instead of say about 6 or 7 crore now we we have a good asset and i also tell you all my entrepreneurs we should have a good asset at some point of time to liquidate and make sure that employees are well taken care even we have a good asset which uh, kasi sahab have uh, uh, narrated here we do have uh, another properties uh, also in the eventuality something goes wrong we should be able to manage it now in this scenario instead of collecting a 6 to 7 crore and we collect only 25 lakhs in the month of april till 25th what do we do we get into a situation we we cannot tell the suppliers yes uh, we can postpone it of course we have postponed to some extent but at least half the amount is been paid whereas to me they have not even paid one by 25th of the things which i have needed actually so that being the scenario we actually call all the top uh, team many of them came to the office and many of them joined from the zoom meeting i said this is a scenario it we have the enough cash in, uh, for this organization to even cater for the next one year but the problem is the immediate cash to deliver if you go to the bank they are not going to give it to us because the pandemic is only making them even worse so what do we do and my people have come out with a beautiful idea a deferred salary a hey, look let's do it partial salary now which will be compensated it's not it's it's, it's a bank it's kept there but given at a later point of time this idea came in uh, from all of us together and believe me last month they took 30% a higher salary than normal salary they take it and uh, we have done uh, thank, thanks to my people thanks to my they are lovely people and uh, we have done appraisal for all my employees in, uh, in the last month not this month december so we were able to do that and we are doing extremely good even in this pandemic time uh because sam have mentioned to you which is a good uh, aspect for all of you also we had a great training period during this period of time we always uh, as a businessman we concentrate on uh, product we concentrate on process we concentrate on something like that but uh, equally or more importantly you need to give the training to the staff that i could see the visible change uh now of course we do the training as normal every time but it was never been of this nature wherein during the pandemic we had every day three days three three times a seminar in that one time a seminar from my side or my design side i will give it done two of the times so or three of the time they will give the training to as as if they are talking to a customer this happened for several months actually in today if i talk, talk about it you won't you, you won't believe uh, the amazing fact it is coming out the ticketing size of increased to two times three times because they were able to convince they understood the product better and they were able to convince the customers more beautifully than what ever used to be because uh, once you know the knowledge when the confident level that you pass it across to the customer who is sitting across is high and that's where uh, this helped us this during this pandemic time my boys have been given a training and now we understand the power of training we used to do it but not to this extent but that we are finding it good amount of uh, uh benefit 
Now, when it comes to striving excellence, which is the third value that we have, uh, we have moved to a transparent uh, place. Most of the cosmite uh, have come and seen the place. Earlier, we used to have a small, small pocket of a place in a 60-40 site with a four floor moving up and down, three different places, uh, traveling, et cetera, et cetera. From there, when we wanted to come here, we had a brainstorm session again. And we asked, hey, look, we are moving to a transparent place. Everything, including CEO, chair, uh, chairman, cabin is also transparent. So no opaque uh, stuff at all. Like. So when we move in there, we have to have the change. What else can we do? What are the things we can do to improve the productivity and the reliability? Believe me, from uh, whatever the productivity we used to have it, we were able to increase in a period of one year time uh, to two times productivity, the same people. And we brought in a lot of automation, uh, design have helped in uh, some other things and you know, we brought in a lot of uh, fixtures and so on and so on. We were able to do that. And today we monitor them with a number. We say 2.4, 2.5 is a target which is set by uh, uh, management and they consistently achieve 2.4 as a productivity per hour, man hour. In one man for an hour, it comes out 2.4 numbers of productivity comes out. That's how it has been defined and they consistently achieve. And we, that are all because we had a great brainstorming session. We understand the data, we understand the tracing and uh, things like that sort. And they came up with an idea of how to improve the situation and they adopted. And next target is in the next two years of time, we should actually make that 2.4 man hour productivity to be four. It's still possible. Design and the whole team is working. During this pandemic has been a great, uh, 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 though I uh, pity the kind of uh, things that we all have to go through it, but it's been a blessing for us to uh, bring in a lot of creativity. So they bring a lot of new product wherein the productivity can be far, far better. And to the number uh, four product per man hour is the one which is expecting it. And one of the things that I also say for, to my uh, team is, uh, when I say building the people, uh, when I talked about the thing, what is the uh, drawback of this organization? If you were to gem this organization to two times, three times, see every year we grow by 15 to 20% or 25%, that's a normal thing. We want to grow faster than that. Maybe you want to double and so on. What do you think is the most uh, critical point that we are missing it? All of them uh, came up and said, second line leader we needed. And we said, why don't you create such kind of second line leader? And you, will believe, you won't believe it. Some of the employees of mine, who is the technocrat to the core. In fact, I call him as uh, internet of things, internet of man, actually. He, he, under, he, he has everything in his mind. Uh, he's like a Bible. He's like an internet. He knows every subject, not, not only technical and non-technical, anything that you talk about, he knows it. He has shown extra interest in getting a second line uh, person for him. That's a kind of culture that we cultivated in uh, organization. And today we have grown only because of such kind of people and we build people of the nature. The rest is byproduct in my opinion. Uh, the last uh, part of my thing is practicing ethics uh, without a regret. I'll tell you, uh, you all seen the kind of product that we do it and prepaid meter is one among the uh, great product which we introduced first time. Uh, in the market about eight years ago, the first time, and people have followed us uh, maybe three years, four years later, and many instances of this nature, prepaid meter is one among them. Uh, but what I want to drive a point here is, when I introduced this uh, prepaid meter into the market, uh, many of us came to us and said, why don't you uh, do that uh, for a utility purpose? And uh, for whatever reason, we clearly say, uh, without regret, ethics without regret. So I said, no, that's not our cup of coffee. Uh, we don't want to uh, spoil our own employees or our own mood. So we will not get into this thing because of the tape or whatever kind of thing. That's not a cup of coffee, we will not do it. And we never got into it. But of course, things changes. Even the country is changing it to the good. And we see a lot of transparency coming into the picture. And uh, today we are in a position to even take up such kind of utility meters the smart meters because a lot of uh, funding is coming, the corruption is reducing it and uh, things becoming better and better for the nation. So we will come out with it. But eight years ago, we were the, many people have asked us, why don't you get into this kind of so on? 
He said, no, we will not do this because we don't want to spoil. And, and that's how we always keep uh, ethics without regret is the last value system that we do it. And I tell you, uh, my sli last slide is uh, this, three to 375. We uh, are proud of three to 375 and not the target crore or something that we do it. That's always a byproduct for to us. And uh, today, because of this team, we can say proudly say we are the largest meter manufacturing company. We are the largest EMS solution provider company, and uh, we make the benchmark for people. And all be and again, great place to work uh, certified team. All because people, people, people. I concentrate on people. The rest is comes that. And uh, that's it from my side. All Cosmite, you have been uh, so nice. You you have, you have been uh, a kind of inspiration to all of us. The kind of encouragement that you give it, the kind of energy level uh, classes have have it, and other people team have it, it's enormous. I think I should learn from it. The rest of my time is going to be spending time for making uh, something worthwhile for my first 50 employees who have worked for me in this organization in the trouble time, in the less privileged time during that period of time. So I'm working towards that to make sure something is beneficial is coming to them. Thank you all.